Yeah. Is consciousness necessary for the internalization of this full gamut of pain? Yes. You this believe is, it is? I believe firmly it is. And, you know, I'm a recovering anesthesiologist. You know, I haven't done it now in, oh gosh, uh, uh, 20 years. Um, but when I did it, and when you were, you know, operating on a patient, um, the patient is unconscious. They are not experiencing pain. You need a conscious brain for the experience of pain. Now, what people incorrectly made the leap of is thinking, well, they're not experiencing pain, so everything's okay. That would be a logical fallacy because all those signals are still coming from the body, mm -hmm. still hitting the spinal cord and having their impact there. All those injury signals, because let's face it, when you do surgery, it's really nothing more than a controlled injury. Yes, and I just want to point out, and, and this shows you how long I haven't been in surgery, but 20 years ago, my recollection is an anesthesiologist was giving not just one medication, but several. Yes. So they were giving something like halothane, which to my understanding, we, we didn't know how it worked then. Do we have any idea how it works today? Better. We still are trying to unlock the whole consciousness aspect of things, but we're we're inching our way there. But it wasn't enough to give that. Right. We still, when I say we, the anesthesiologists still had to give typically a narcotic. They were, st they were still typically giving something like fentanyl, even though the patient was unconscious. Yes. They were also often giving an amnesiac so that they wouldn't have any recollection of what was going on. But of course, we all hear the horror stories of the patient and a paralytic on and top a, of all that, right? Exactly. So, Muscle relaxant. Yeah. So you hear these horrible stories of the patient who is paralyzed, but somehow conscious. Y y y you can miss on this state sort of thing. But just to make sure I understand, in theory, a paralytic and an inhaled anesthetic should be sufficient to eliminate the perception of pain in a patient who is being cut. Yeah. Part of the challenge was, and now here... I'm starting to step outside of my wheelhouse, even though I was a member of the anesthesia tribe for a long time, is the levels of volatile gas anesthetic that you need to necessarily obliterate um, reflexes and the full nociceptive impulses would be so high that it would depress one's blood pressure. Got it. And so you augment that with an opioid. Understood. Like fentanyl, like morphine, like whatever and you combine those together, and that's why what the anesthesiologists do is quite magical. Got it. So in other words, you give the inhaled anesthetic just to get unconsciousness, but not to fully suppress the nociceptic system. Instead, you bring on the opioid to do the remainder of that work. They're working synergistically, yep. and they're working at different mechanisms. Got it. And during that process, the patient is not feeling pain if they're unconscious, because you do need a conscious working, aware brain to feel pain, but all of the electrical impulses coming in from the body that are slamming into the spinal cord and the brain are open full bore. They're impinging on all those brain systems responsible for stress responses and So does that mean control. we are seeing a cortisol surge? We're seeing whatever one would expect a conscious person to experience with epinephrine, norepinephrine, cortisol, all these things still surging out yes. in response to pain. Yes. And in, in response to nociception. Independent of perception of pain. Right. And you notice that I'm trying to be precise in my language here mm -hmm. because since they're unconscious, there's no pain, but there's plenty of nociception. Arguably more than you would ever experience. I mean, if you think think about what surgery, think about what we do in surgery. My God, take Astounding. a scalpel yes. and then take an electrocautery and start burning tissue. Right. This is, I mean, there's no level of nociception you could ever experience like that while being awake unless you're in a burning car. Absolutely. That's exactly it. And it's remarkable through modern medicine that we get people through all this is a, a, a reflection of uh, advancements in surgery, advancements in anesthesiology, advancements in post-operative care. But it is no different than a controlled injury. Uh, it's done in a nice sterile environment, but it is a massive injury that people are undergoing. Yeah. And they're just not awake. 
and it's nice and clean and sterile. But there is a stress response associated with that. Most people recover well. What one of the hot topics of research these days is why do most people recover, but a certain percentage of people go on to have persistent pain after surgery? Uh, that's an area that I used to research years ago. Many others are doing some great work in that space. Turns out that a lot of the factors, we're going to get to this, is what people bring to your operating room table. Uh, meaning early life events, mm. the levels of emotional health, cognitive health, and everything else. Um, so to answer your question and getting back to it, no, I don't believe there is the perception of pain without a conscious brain. Um, and we, can, you know, there's all sorts of nuances to that. Though. Yeah. So let's go back to something you said at the outset from an evolutionary perspective, which is pain and pleasure have been the driving factors that have been the engine of natural selection. Yes. And, but clearly those things have had to work in pre-conscious models. Yes. So that means that whatever we're defining as pain there did not include a perception of pain. Yes. So what does that mean? That's where it gets muddy. And there's smarter people than I that would probably be more articulate. But I think this is why I, I think on first principles, you have to define the thing that you're talking about. When we typically talk about pain, we're talking about it from a uniquely human standpoint. Does a dog experience pain? Easier to accept. Yeah. Easier to accept. I'm a dog person. I, you know, it, I, I believe they, they, they experience pain. You move on down the evolutionary. At what point? Right. Does a goldfish experience does pain? Does it? Goldfish clearly experiences no susception. They clearly have all the classic withdrawal, mm -hmm. protection, survival aspects of it. But what level is there a conscious brain that is translating it? And also on top of it, remember in our human definition of pain, we bake in, it's an unpleasant sensory and emotional, emotional. experience. Does a goldfish experience emotions? I leave that to the goldfish experts. <laughs> I. You see how you see how muddy it gets, yeah. and you go down rabbit holes pretty quickly. Um, which is why I tend to stay with humans. Which yeah. is which, which is, is hard enough, enough, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <I> just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs>